Hello friends, welcome to a learning room. This video is designed to give you a brief understanding over serial transmission modes and serial transmission methods. First we will see the purpose of synchronization for data communication and the methods available for data transmission. However, a device is required to transmit data to another device. There should be some mutual, okay, there should be some mutual agreement between the two devices that is the receiver must know how to read the receiving data where the data begins and where it ends for this purpose we need to have a synchronization method synchronous and asynchronous transmissions are the two different methods of transmission and synchronous transmission method data transmission is synchronized by a clock here we require of two signals one is pulse and one signal it's called clock or strobe and another is a data signal so the pulse on the clock strobe indicates when the data is to be taken or when it is ready the advantage of a synchronous uh, transmission method is lower overhead and the greater throughput since we have a separate signal for synchronization there is very low overhead and thus the throughput is also more Practically all parallel communication protocols use synchronous transmission. Synchronous transmission sends data as one long bit stream or block of data. Synchronous transmission is faster than asynchronous because very few bits has to be transmitted. That is only data bits and no extra con and no extra control bits. If you see here the sender and the receiver, they have two signals. One is clock on data. So with respect to clock, the data will be read. Uh, at the receiver end and there will be some mutual uh, protocol between these two and when when will be the data is ready and when it is not and when a data is finished a data byte is finished and when it will starts right the next one is asynchronous transmission mode In asynchronous transmission mode data transmission is not synchronized by clock but some special signals are required are used along transmission medium only one signal line is enough and there is no required of any clock signal here receiver uses transitions on this signal to figure out the transmission bitrate and timing the most common asynchronous transmission use start stop signaling so before it starts uh, the communication it will send some a level of transition to indicate that the transmission is going on it could, could be more than the width of the actual bit and it will have some special length of character at the end to indicate the end of the data frame it is well suited for applications where messages are generated at irregular intervals uh, relatively slow due to added control bits with asynchronous transmission signal timing is not required signals are sent in an agreed pattern of bit and if both ends are agreed on the pattern then communication time can take place if the signal is not synchronized with receiver will not be able to distinguish when the next group of bits will arrive to overcome this data is preceded by a start bit usually binary the byte is then sent and the stop bits are added to at the end the next is uh, serial data transmission modes more direct the direction of flow of data from between two communicating devices we have two types of transmission modes depends on the flow of direction of the data one is simplex and the other is a duplex and in the duplex we have another two half duplex and full duplex we'll see in detail here the first is simplex transmission mode simplex transmission mode as the name implies simplex the data communication is unidirectional a receiver cannot send the reply back to sender a device a the data can be communicated I mean the transmitter from device A to device B, but not from device A to device A under serial transmission mode. If the direction is only unit, so the data is transmitted only in one direction. The best example for this is the mouse keyboard. Mouse and keyboard send their signals to CPU, but never they receive any controls or something else from the CPU. This is the best example. Next is duplex transmission mode. Under this we have half duplex and full duplex. Half duplex. In half duplex transmission mode, data communication is bidirectional. So in the case of simplex, it is unidirectional, but here it is bidirectional. But 
only one direction is allowed at a time means the medium or the channel is alternately used by the devices is one if one device is using to transmit the data the other and the device we cannot use it for transmit that at the same time but after completion of that transmission done by the device a device b can again do that so wh while device a is transmitting device b cannot transmit it will be in a receiving mode only similarly when device b is in transmitting mode the device a cannot transmit it should be in a receiving mode but as you see here both directions are possible but at a time only one direction is allowed but here in full duplex transmission mode data transmission is bidirectional but here in full duplex transmission mode also the data transmission is bidirectional but both directions are allowed at the same time data can send as well can receive the data means the device a can send data to device b and can it, and it can parallelly receive data similarly device b also can send and receive data at the same time full duplex will the throughput uh, i mean the communicate in so the the throughput in full duplex is more compared to other transmission modes so these are the more transmission modes available in serial communication thank you for watching this video